Today in this episode, we consider what God has promised us and what's preventing us from receiving all of it. Hey there, welcome to the Five by the Fire podcast. I'm your host, Armand Sheffy, AKA Pastor Fury. And I'm also the executive director of the Unshackled Network, a family of missionaries that exists to help the marginalized experience freedom in Jesus by equipping and empowering disciple makers called to the forgotten. And in this podcast, we take a look at a passage in the day's reading in the McShane Bible reading plan, and we dive in for a handful of minutes. So grab a cup of coffee, Cozy up like we're by the fire and let's chat. This is Five by the Fire. And today we read Joshua 18 and 19, Psalm 149 and 150, Jeremiah 9, and Matthew 23. Now, in these days, I am more frequently contemplating God's plans for my life, my career, and my ministry. One of the things I constantly have to come face to face with is my self-limiting thinking, my scarcity mindset that we discussed in previous episodes, and a settling in to what I have and today's reality versus what God has said is possible, what he's promised, and tomorrow's pain-born victories. In today's reading of Joshua 18 and 19, there was one simple statement that I read that stopped me in my tracks, and I'd like to discuss it for a moment. So while surveying the territory in Joshua 18, um, we see Joshua facing a realization for himself. The truth that the Israelites have clearly stopped short of receiving all that God has offered. The passage starting in uh, chapter 18, verse two, reads as this. There remained among the people of Israel seven tribes whose inheritance had not yet been apportioned. So Joshua said to the people of Israel, how long will you put off going in to take possession of the land which the Lord, the God of your fathers has given you? And that's from Joshua 18, verses two and three. Joshua calls them out on their neglect, their stubborn hesitance, disobedience, and laziness. God pointed to a land. He promised it to his people. He told them to go dispossess the enemies and take possession of it. And yet, here they sit. Some portions still not yet claimed, but others had been claimed. This to me is actually such a clear picture of not only the state of the people in Joshua's day, but in our current generation as well. The church today stands at so many different places in relation to this promised land. Some of us are experiencing a prevalence of God's peace and joy as with his power, they go and subdue the land, tackling challenges they always deemed too great for them and climbing mountains that they always seemed were too too tall. But because God called them to it, they knew with confidence he didn't power them through it. And as promised, he never failed while others stand just outside the gate between them and the land that are moments away from responding in faith to the call and seeing God move in miraculous ways as he strengthens their obedience, while even others still now sit, growing more and more comfortable in the homes that they've fashioned far outside of the promise. They grow relaxed and allow fear to convince them that they can have a version of God's joy apart from embracing the difficult obedience. The church that sits is still those like the tribes that Joshua calls out today as he asks, why don't you have your inheritance? I wonder, which group do you and I find ourselves in today? Are we thriving in the promised land? or are we simply trying to survive without the inheritance? Today, let's ensure that we are grabbing God's hand and shaking any dust that has settled on our work boots and marching forward into whatever promise God has called us to embrace, trusting that though there is often fearful work ahead, his inheritance is always worth it. Would you pray with me? 
Father God, we thank you for the, the challenging work that you give us of believing you for greater, believing your promises will be fulfilled, believing that your inheritance is on the other side of the fearful things that we face. Lord God, there's a reason we recognize, there's a reason that your word over and over and over again tells us not to be afraid. Lord, we pray right now that fear would not hold us back from obedience, Lord God, but that your spirit would remind us that we have all that we need to do all that you've called us to, Lord God. Help us to go after the promise today. Help us to receive in full that which you've given us, the inheritance that you've given us that just lies there waiting for us to take. We love and we thank you. It's in Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys. Well, hey, you need to be like revved up, charged up, ready to go after this one today. I know I am. So before we go, right, before we go and receive that promise, head on over to fivebythefire.org, leave a comment. Or if you're watching this as opposed to listening, go ahead and just reply wherever you're looking at this. I'd love to hear that you are going to go passionately pursue the promise that God has waiting for you. And no matter what you do, I hope that you are experiencing God's joy and his blessing because he's called you to be blessed and to be a blessing. So go do that. And I'll see you here tomorrow.